What to do, man? It's your boy, Euro Got It. I just jumped out the port with Dirty Glove Bass. I dropped a pill in my drink. I took a meal out the bank. Then I jumped in the race. I'm everything that you ain't. All right, today we got Euro Got It. Welcome to DGB, gang. What to do, what to do? Pretty good, pretty good. So what you out here working on while you in Atlanta? Uh, sure, I got a lot of stuff uh, coming up. Some stuff I don't really want to, I want to keep kind of disclosed because it's like, it's a lot and I want to give people the element of surprise. So outside of that though, uh, I got a project out right now, Foreign Affairs, but a uh, Grammy Award winning uh, producer, uh, Street Symphony, two time actually. Uh, Foreign Affairs is out right now. Also, um, got the tape dropping, got Future on it and I got like, Two, three other super produce, I mean, super, um, superstars on there. It's like, yeah, I don't want to, I ain't want to leak the names on them yet, but it's just been working. For working. Sure. For sure. For sure. 2021 looking good. Already. So how does your 21, 2021 compare to your 2020 so far already? Um, uh, really, um, I think for everybody, 2020 was like a year of like, it was like the awakening year, like, you know what I'm saying? Where you saw a lot of stuff and it was just, it pretty much like bought the hustle out of some people and you know, some people folded, some people took off. And for me, it was like, I took a lot of, I, I learned a lot of lessons in 2020. So it's like 2021 has just been so far, like just blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. So it's like, you know, it's amazing. It's going crazy. That's dope. Yeah. How do you feel Atlanta compares to other cities you visited? Uh, well, I mean, with this, with Atlanta being my home, it's like, honestly, I don't know, it's a, the, the feeling is, is different. It's different. I ain't gonna cap. Right now, right now, eh, it's hard to explain because Atlanta really ain't Atlanta right now. We got, it's like, we the new boiling pot. So we got, we got up top, we got down, we got people from everywhere just like migrated and flocked in the city. So it's, the city really saturated. It's, it's the city still, but it's still saturated. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, I'm not liking the feeling of it right now, the vibe of it, because we always been player cool. You know what I'm saying? Calm, collect, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's oversaturated with the violence and stuff right now. So everything going on, it's a lot, but it's still the city. So, um, it's, 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 it's home for me. Like, it's home. I never, I never lived nowhere else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm gonna die in Atlanta. Like, that's how it is. I'm gonna live here, live there, live there, but I'm always come home. Got for sure. And what, like you said, I like what you said, with Atlanta being the new boiling pot, mm. how do you feel that takes a toll on the city? Um, it opened the world up for diversity. Uh, it opened us up to a lot, a lot of stuff. Like, I think it's more money opportunities. I hate the traffic. Everybody hate the traffic. But uh personally, I think if you about your business, it's looking good for the economy. Like it's more money coming in, really. You know what I'm saying? Like it's opening up diversity. So it's like I like it. Got the pros and cons. For sure. Yeah. How would you describe your childhood growing up here in Atlanta? Uh, my childhood was different, honestly. Like I ain't got the whole sob story that everybody got about, like, you know, oh, this, that, and the third. I grew up with both my parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, my mom, heavy in the church to this day, she, she still like that. Uh, so it's like a lot of my discipline came from the way in which, like, I was raised, you know what I'm saying? My dad being from the street, my mom not. My dad was kind of like, he broke the first generational curse of, like, being there for his children, you know what I'm saying? I'm the oldest of 10 kids, so it's like same mom and dad. So my pops being in my life, that pretty much like set the standard and example as to how he wasn't a perfect dad, but the fact that he took that initiative to be there, me having to understand like a lot of kids grow up fatherless, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I definitely took advantage of that as I got older and moving, learning to maneuver through life, you know what I'm saying? Cause even when he, came out the streets it was he always had that, that street tie to street love and stuff like that so um you know like just being basically like how I was raised I think like it definitely helped with me having stored standards and morals and stuff like that now so yeah like I I, I was I've had I had a pretty decent coming up you know what I'm saying typical family struggle struggle like y'all going through it then you up and then you go back down but that helped you all throughout your life, like now as an adult, I know what it's like to be down. I know what it's like to be up. So, yeah, 
That's solid. Yeah. And growing up with a house full of 10 kids, I know y'all all probably Tight smack man. together. It's close. weird. Cause we, it seems like, no, we are. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, we are. We are. It's just like sometimes people go older. I think like with me being like the eldest and stuff, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just, I'm just, I don't know what it is. I'm more of a loner though. And my brother more of a loner. So we kind of like, you know, we ain't really the black sheep, but we kind of like the black sheep. But it's all love, like, you know, we don't feel like no outsider or nothing like that. It was, it's pretty much like I learned a lot of family values too, like not having money. It's like, damn, you got to find another way to be happy. So my family was always that support system to make us. They made us understand, like, even I, that's why I want a big family now. Cause yeah. it's, it's like I saw what it was like. Damn, we ain't gotta have no money to be this happy, you know what yeah. I mean? And I like that, so yeah. That's solid. I like that. So I can imagine when you discovered that your brother had passed away, what that also did to your family. Oh no, okay. So my brother got shot. He ain't passed away. He yeah. got shot five times. Uh and that that pretty much that was like a that was a, another turning point in my life. Like it was crazy because um it was like it was like, I had just got out. I only been out like a year and some change. And I really wanted to just stay on the straight and narrow and just be trying to do the right thing because I understood like the situation I was up against, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking like, dang. But at the same time, it's still, it's still a part of me inside that kind of like, you still, you play by the streets, you gotta live by the code, you know what I'm saying? And I know my brother, I know, I know, like, I don't know. I just felt like at that time when he got shot and he lived and stuff like that, business still had to be handled. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it really just took my brother just being like alive to like actually stop me and tell me like, bro, like, you know, this ain't this ain't it, bro. Like this ain't it. Like going to try to help me out, like you know what I'm saying, prove something. No, nah, ain't it, bro. Like you you got to do better. I'm alive. I'm here to tell you this. I'm to my tools still in them and everything. Mm -hmm. And like, that was just really my calling for me to take that and be like, dang. So I shook back and I was like, you know what? I felt, it felt different not handling things the way you normally typically handle things, but it was different. So it was like, I channeled that energy and that's how I got into doing like showcasing and stuff like that. Cause that was like my first time performing. And he was like, bro, I just need you to go hard, go hard. You got it, just go hard. Yeah. And that was what it was. That's solid. Who would you say are some of your musical influences? Uh, really, honestly, everybody with a story. Not just so much because they're superstars. It's like, I made a caption, like, people only glorify you when you make it out. And it, it's like, it's true. Everybody got the same stroke. You know, we all, we all come from something like, everybody got some kind of problem, some kind of issue, but it's more so the people who like push through, like the baby got a real strong story to me. The fact that he was baby Jesus at first. A lot of people criticize him, like they didn't rock with him, this, that, and third. And then it was, it was like he pushed through, rebranded himself, came back. And then it was like, you know, Two Chain. Two Chain used to be Titty Boy. And when he rebranded himself, he pushed through. Of course, Future, like Fush, uh, Fut, just like, I watched his whole story, like all the way. I ain't even talking about from Dirty Spray. I'm talking about way before then. I'm talking about like doing Space Cadet, like when he was with the Dungeon family and all that, like that Fut. Um, just everybody really like, you know, like anybody who really just pretty much had a story to tell, like I always be inspired. I take something from everybody because at the end of the day, it's a lot to get here. So everybody overcoming their obstacle and pushing through to make it happen. Like that shit, that's, that's huge. Nah, for real. Yeah. When would you say you jumped off the porch? Uh, honestly, I was probably about, I probably started getting, I started getting in trouble around 16. But not all the way until like 18, like not nah, like 17, like that's summer 17, like, um, yeah, around like 17, then it was like completely, like out of there, was, I'd probably say like, probably like 18. For it was sure. just, um, yeah, 18. For sure. Like 18. And what do you feel is the biggest life lesson you learned growing up? Um, I don't know, I take a lot. I guess like, 
Believing, really. Like believing, like I guess, like, cause it's like a lot of a lot of shit like really happened just from really really believing. Like it all fall under the umbrella like manifestation and like spirituality and and having faith and stuff like that. So it's like believing, cause it's happening. You know what I mean? Straight up. What's the biggest obstacle you feel you had to overcome during your career? Hmm. And in the streets. Uh. You always gotta like. I think. I think the one thing that really helped me with the streets was understanding what I was really getting into. Like understanding, it's like that's why I was like, hey, when I got locked up, I was able to sit down and not rat on nobody, not tell nobody because I understood what I was getting into. If I was like jumping off the porch, I know the consequence. I know I can get robbed. I know I can. I can. I can go to jail. I know. I know it's a lot of stuff. I know I can get snitched on i know anything can happen but and, and it's the same thing it's like when you understand what come with playing the game you just be like are you you know you're gonna get hit with them and i've been hit with a lot of stuff like a lot of stuff still be getting hit with a lot of stuff music gang ain't really no different from the street it's actually worse than the street yeah you gotta learn to play mentally outside like of being physical you know what i'm saying yeah and it's like coming from like a lot of people coming from the street you never really have to, you got to use your mental, but it's like, it, it's a, it, it's not all mental. It's not like, it's like, it's like basketball. You get, you got to think, but you also get physical. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You still got to try to like chess is an all physical, I mean, all mental game. And a lot of people can't understand how to play the game mentally. That's why they don't last. That's why they crash out and stuff like that. So I crashed out from the streets by not being mental. But I took that and I applied that to the music and I can't crash out because it's like I understand what's going on. I'm playing a mental game. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to ask you this because me personally, uh -huh. I'm kind of like dealing with the same thing where uh -huh. it is in the music industry. It's a mental game. Fact. So what are some pointers or some things you will have to give other entrepreneurs, other people venturing into the music industry or anybody you just know that is in an element or state where they have to be playing a mental game or thinking strategic, what are some tools you would let off to some of those people? Uh, first thing, like knowing what your calling is. I grew up in the church, but I always knew I was going to be a rapper. Always. Like I wouldn't even, my, my mama didn't even, I wouldn't even raise listening to rap. Like I didn't know, I didn't know rap. I couldn't tell you who Tupac was when I was coming up because I didn't see them. Like I didn't watch that on TV and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, my mind always, I always knew I had tattoos in my face. I always saw my hands with, <laughs> with like I swear, at yeah. a young age, I always saw that. I just never understood it. So it, it's kind of like now that I'm living and what's going on, everybody used to say you supposed to be a preacher. But I know what I saw. I saw a rapper when I was younger. But by me giving away like the 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 motivational speeches, I be trying to put the young niggas on. You know what I'm saying? To better the community and and then doing music at the same time, it's like the two tied in together. You know what I'm saying? It's like being a street preacher in a sense. So it's kind of like me in a sense. I understand my calling, and when you understand your calling, you will understand it's like it's some kind of positivity that's gonna come out of what you're supposed to be doing. You weren't, niggas weren't born to be a killer. You was not born, I don't give a damn what you say, you weren't born to be a killer. You weren't born to be a thief. You weren't born to be anything that you think, you weren't born, to, niggas weren't born to sell dope. They sell that because it's because persona look good for the streets and shit. We weren't never, nobody was ever born to do nothing negative. So anytime you do, but as a rapper, it's like with me kicking out positivity, I understand what my calling is because I get blessed according to using my, my, my job for, the right cause, you know what I'm saying? I get paid for it, but this and the third, I don't indulge, I don't get caught up in what these other niggas like. Like, I know the destruction and shit that come with that. So I do what I gotta do to get my coins, make sure my family's great, and I go about my business, live my life. When you understand your calling, understand the positivity that's supposed to come out of that shit, then it's like, you could tell because you will start, you don't feel like you're going through it for no reason. When you go to college, if you really wanna be, if you wanna be a doctor, then you understand, okay, I gotta take exams. I understand you don't mind going through it. You know, I got to do it in order to, and a lot, that's why a lot of these niggas check out so easy so soon because it's like, it wasn't your calling. You was going for the glitz and glam of it. So first thing I would say is like, know what your calling is. Evaluate yourself, learn who you are and understand what it is that you comfortable with doing outside of what anybody thinks. Your call might be to be a Walmart manager. 
You know what I'm saying? It's the help, it's the better, this, that, the third. You don't want to do it, but that, that might have been your call. You don't know the blessing that's going to come out of it that's going to make your life better. You know what I mean? Straight up. And, and, and so I, to any entrepreneur, to any artist or anybody that's aspiring to do anything, it's more so like understand and try to figure out like what's the positivity that you will be doing from doing it. You know what I'm saying? We sell so much bullshit. Like, nigga tell you, I want to do it just to get my family scraped. Nigga, you can't, you ain't getting your family scraped. Now, you ain't even trying to figure out how to get your family scraped. But you telling us, like, I want to do it like, you can't, you can't fool the universe. The universe know what people really actually want to do when they, you know what I'm saying, get in certain situations. Nah, for real. Yeah, so. Know what you want to do, that'd be my first one. Absolutely. And I think another thing is the reason why your motivational messages are so well respected is because you're not dishonest about where you came from. Right. So you faced two life sentences. Right. But you also endured the negativity. But now you embrace the positivity that's coming now your way because you turned your life around. So how hard was it for you then talking to young Euro guided versus the Euro guy that we see today who was sitting in the cell facing two life sentences versus who we see today? Uh just understanding, understanding like the opportunity I was just like granted. Like I ain't gonna count. Like really even sitting in the cell, I was still like, I was cool, but I was already at peace with understanding like what I did. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was at peace with understanding not what I did to get there, but what I did to get there. Cause again, I got locked up. But what was crazy, I got locked up for not writing a statement on what happened. Not because I got like caught up in none of those shit. It was because I didn't rap. They wanted, all they wanted was names so I can go home. I sat two years with no bond because I wouldn't give up a name. Like just one day, all right, fuck it. You don't know what happened? Give us a name. I wouldn't give up a name. I sat two years. So it's like doing that. But that's how the universe and karma work. I had to sit down for some shit, I, a lot of shit I know I did in the past, and I knew it all had to catch up. I was just fortunate enough to be like, when I understood that, it was like, sometimes like God put you in a situation where it's kind of like, you spank your child when your child do something wrong, but when you understand like, dang, they really fear what they did and they understand, you be like, all right, like, I feel like God know, like I never put myself in no situation like that again. I feel like God knew I woke up and understood what my purpose was in life, you know what I'm saying? To influence other people and motivate the streets and stuff like that. And I feel like that's really why I got granted another opportunity. So it's like, like. That's a blessing. Fair. So you just came out the cell swinging mm -hmm. with Posse featuring Lil Baby. Mm -hmm. How did that record come together? Uh, really, it was just like the energy was everything. Posse was actually the first record I ever, I recorded like freestyle. Like I freestyle. I was so amped up about the beat. It was the first time the producer was in town and uh, me and him had already been working and cooking up. He came all the way from Texas. So it was just like the energy was crazy. Like I got, I just got rid of like a negative toxic situation. It was just like, it was just shedded new energy. Like I felt it. So it was just like in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I want to say like I had a song recorded like late. And then it was like, um, in my head, I'm already thinking from the energy, like, damn, it's the one. I know it's the one. But I ain't want to never put it out there, like, publicly. I'm like, I'm going to let um, Boom hit and see what Boom think. And then Boom, you know, he say, that's it. Like, I know it's it. And it was crazy because the song come on, he on his phone. And I'm like, damn, I just knew that was the one. Song go off. Another one, he said, hey, go back to that last song. And that's when I knew it. And he was like, oh, it's out of here. So he asked, he's like, what you want to do with it? Who you want to put on it? I said, shit, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't even think about Lil Baby because I felt like coming from nothing, Lil Baby so far-fetched, like he had just dropped that song with Drake. So, you know, he was, that was like his breaking point that got him out of here. Yeah. And um, yeah, but you know, it'd be crazy how God worked. Like it just somehow the situation worked out how it was supposed to. And then it was just like smooth transition, like, yeah, that, that was that was definitely like a memorable moment, like, and then understand like how baby energy, like baby was fucking with it, like hard. I come in the studio, like he already knowing the song, and he been in there already about 15 minutes, and he rapping the hook, and I'm like, damn, oh shit, I do got a hook. Yeah. I got a hit, like, so it was like, yeah, 
that was that was that was a crazy time. Video, everything, like and every time I see baby, it's always love, like genuine person. So a lot of respect. For sure. Then you followed up with Kodak featuring Gunner. Yeah. How did that come together? Actually, Gunner came about first. I was really just like kicking it. And and then boom called me like, hey, come on to the studio. I don't know what the hell is going on. I just go up there and be honest with you, uh, I forgot what Gunner mixtape was at that time. That's how I had found out about Gunner, because everybody was on his mixtape he had at that time. And um, I had never seen him fa his face, though. I might have seen a glimpse of him, but I ain't never seen him. I was just in my own lane trying to like get myself organized. I, don't, I wasn't even paying attention to who nobody really was like that. So I go in there and I'm looking, I'm like, and I heard somebody say, now nah, wow, that is gun, like, you know, like another cool nigga, like home cool here. So he got on there, he did what he did, like, you know, Straight always up. love, a lot of respect, bro. How would you describe the music scene overall in Atlanta? It is what it is. I'm just proud of, I'm proud of like anybody finding a way to get some money. Me understanding how the music game really work and stuff like that. I'm just proud of the young niggas who really come from nothing like that. And when I say young nigga, I mean anybody in general. Anybody who's just really like figuring out how to get paid off of doing this, it's hard. Like, yeah. it's not as easy as niggas think. Like, it's a lot of glitz and glam, but it really ain't gold. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, some people learn to take advantage of the, of the uh, seize the opportunity and learn from their ills and get paid. And then you get some people who just like kind of crash out. But, um, I mean, for the one doing good, I'm, I'm proud of them. Like, it's, if, if you pay attention, it's like really everybody who winning is the ones who showing love, the ones who linking up with everybody, the ones who ain't got no hate in this and third. You got them other people. It's a big pot of a lot of people who just got, you can just tell who got the hate. Like, regardless of what people say, just pay attention to their situation. Because if it was love, if they were showing love, they were really rocking with niggas like they say they really rock with niggas. Niggas be in a lot higher position because, it, but they don't, you know, coming from where we come from. Niggas coming from where, where you know, having a fuck like niggas not having the opportunity I had to have a father to tell them don't think like that. Like being real, niggas think like bitches. They like naturally, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to downplay these niggas or shit on niggas. But it's like a lot of these niggas come from single home families with their mom who was always mad because his dad wants shit or her job ain't doing something. And naturally, that mentality just rub off. And now he, this nigga grew up in. He don't like like it. Be funny. I be trying to understand, nigga. We don't even know each other from a campaign. How y'all niggas just don't like each other. And that's why y'all niggas where y'all at. Every nigga in Atlanta know I done reached out to all these niggas who having some motion, whether a nigga got a little bit motion, whether a nigga fell off, whether a nigga, I done reached out, I done did my work. I done reached out to these niggas like, yo, let's lock in at that link. And it was like, whoever like shit just saw it as nine nah, locking in, it is what it is. Like you see, you could tell niggas position based off of like how they stay, like money move. Money move drop hitting in 2017. But look where he at now, like, he up. That, that's one thing I say, Moo, ne I never felt no hate for Moo. I don't give a damn. We be in the club, he ain't come on, everybody don't know it like that at that time. And it's like, mine come on, he said, it would never, like, Moo never show no hate. That's always been like, I say, bro, get everything he deserved right now. He deserved it. It wasn't never no hate. I never sent, sensed no hate from bro. But I, and I'm watching a lot of niggas, they don't understand you come and go. You never know who gonna be up, who gonna be down. So you gotta play the game equally and just show everybody love. Home one, everybody one song away from a hit. Whether it's ass, whether it's hard, not. It's this Atlanta. You blow up off of saying rah rah shit. It don't matter. Like, so it's, it, it, it's a, it's a fine line of the niggas who's winning and they winning because it's like we all understand how to show love, how to uni unify. And then you got them niggas who you got to watch out for because they going to rob you, take all your shit because them niggas hurting. They hating. They they damn mad. They got their bitch ass. You know, that bitch, bitch ass nigga mentality. Mad about everything. Want to do you dirty just because. It's like, nah, bro, they, we ain't know that. But, yeah, you see both sides of that in Atlanta, so. That's real. Yeah. And another thing you mentioned before about financial literacy, how a lot of people don't be having that much motion going on or making or faking it till they making it. But you actually are an advocate for rappers understanding financial literacy. Fact. So why do you feel that's so important for 
an artist, not a, you know, an artist, a business person, uh -huh. why is it important for them to understand exactly what financial literacy is? Well, first, like, a lot of people don't understand. It's a simple term, really. It's like literacy. It's like basically just understanding money in a sense. Learn to understand, like, being able to understand money. Like, the whole point of business is money at the end of the day. That's the whole point of a business. Like, at the end of the day, it's the... I ain't gonna just say it's so, so much money, but it's to get out. It's, it's, it's basically, it's funds. However the funds, however we can find a solution to benefit each other, that's what a business is for. And a lot of, a lot of like rapper, what they don't understand is, uh, or artists in general, they come from nothing. So coming from nothing, you never would, man, come on, bro. I guarantee you, I would say probably 95 to 98% of these artists don't read contracts. Or they cap, they go with, they, the label tell you, we got an attorney for you, they go to them. Like, they like, the labels and people are already understanding you have no sense of business. They knowing you come from nothing. They knowing pussy and a chain and money. They knowing this materialistic shit is going to grab your attention because you never had it. They plotting on you being They dumb. plotting on you. But, but at the same time, here's the flip to it, though. They're not wrong. I hate to say it, it's not wrong. It's a, it's a business agreement. A contract is a business agreement. If I tell you, let me give you 100,000 right quick and then I'm gonna take six million from you and you sign that line, you signed it. Yeah, I know you didn't know that shit, but it don't matter. I mean, I did business with you. You, you still had an opportunity, but you know what I'm saying? So it's like, a lot of us down, like, like we, we talk shit about like how fucked up the game is, but the game fucked up because you don't know. And with a lot of people, when you do find out, when you do know, they are downplayed and talk, you know, like you get people who they, they, they say, like me, I, I would seem difficult, but I would seem difficult because I'm an intelligent black nigga. Like you can't fuck me over. Like I'm not going for shit. You can't sit here and tell me that wall black and I'm seeing this white. I'm not going to just say, I'm not going to be a yes man. So it's like, it's just important. Whatever game you in, you ain't selling dope and not understanding the dope game. How are you going to do that? Nigga gonna jug you every time. You know what I'm saying? You going, whatever you gonna get into, you gonna play ball, you gonna learn how to play. Learn the music game. Don't just think it's all fun and games and then like, let's just, let me do the fun part and worry about the other. Like I be feeling, all these niggas will be looking like they flesh up. I be feeling bad for them niggas because I'm knowing what's really going on. And right. like, it ain't what it seems, you know what I'm saying? Right. So talk to us about your upcoming project. So I got a project coming up. I got Foreign Affairs just dropped. Um, second ago foreign fair is going crazy and i got foreign forever coming out um it's like that's like that's like an evolution tape where you're going to see so much like growth from like even going back to where i started leading up to now and it's going to tell like a whole story it's going to be crazy like track for track i ain't i'm not even saying this it's, this is not me selling my tape this is just me being just 100. i'm my own critic there's not gonna be one song on there that gets skipped because it ain't it ain't that I'm I'm super like super conscious about the the material that I put out. I don't always have control of it, but whatever I have to to make for myself, like it's it, it got it got to be something that's gonna go. So um, Form Forever just pretty much like shows uh, my growth from starting leading up to now. Um, yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I just, it's, it's definitely anticipated with the super features I, I got on there. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even just a feature. It's just the songs, the producers. Like, it's just the project is gonna say a lot for itself, for sure. and forever. Like, it's, it's crazy. I, I mean, we've seen you working with Future. You can go yeah. ahead and tell us about oh, yeah, that. Yeah, Fu oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, so Future is like, it, it's crazy. Future is definitely, um, he is the biggest, but I definitely got people in Future Lead that we also gonna have on the tape too. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say future and lead is on, but they up there with that status. You know what I'm saying? And so um it's gonna be crazy. Uh future, we also we shot the video um for the song we got called Take Off, made by the super producer Bangladesh. Uh he got five Grammys, so it was crazy because like I think the, the the craziest part about it really is like I even share this, like I got this. I got that shit on my phone somewhere. But anyway, in my note, what I'll be doing, I'll be writing down shit. Like I write down shit and I go at, it's like my manifestation board. 
like my goals and everything. And it's a scripture called Habakkuk 2 and 2 through verse 4. Basically talking about like how you got to write it down and you manifest it. So when it do manifest, people who ain't got faith, when you share it with them, they by that to have faith. So it's like, it was crazy because 2020, May of 2020, I wrote down, like, I got, I'm going to get a super feature. Like, I'm going to get a crazy feature. I said, collab, I'm going to collab with the top producer, top producers and the top artists in the world. I wrote that down. And it's like, down there, actually, it would be a- You wrote a, it on paper or you typed it out on your phone? I typed it on my phone. And it, it's like, damn it, God damn, hold on. If I look at the date, let me see. Cause I wrote, I wrote that shit in May of, I wrote that shit in May of um, last year. Damn. Oh, that's, uh, I shot that video Saturday or something. Anyway, literally, literally 12 months later, like no bullshit, literally um, a year to date later, a year from when I wrote that, a year to date later, I'm standing right there with Future and Bang was there shooting a video. Like this same, like I, I'm not even making this shit up. I wrote that shit May 21st. We shot the video. The video was, um, I think, um, March 20th. That's like 12 months later. Yeah. That's like, crazy. it's 10 months. It's not 10, 12 to 12. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here counting. You know what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm counting wrong. Stupid ass name. I'm not that smart, ugly ass. But anyway, it is. It's, it's 10 months. my fault. 10 months. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. But anyway, yeah, it was close enough. It was less than a year. Let's say that then. So, but it came together. That's it the came point. together. That's what, that's that's what really that happened. Matters. Matters. So, so. I, it was like, that shit was crazy. Like, I wrote my mixtape name. When I was in jail, didn't even know that's what I was doing. Like my tape form forever. I wrote that shit down and I wasn't even trying to name a postcard. I was just, I mean, I wasn't trying to name no tape. I was just writing shit, like taking the, the two letters, like Chanel is double C's, Gucci double G's. Like, and I put my own name to them instead of calling the, yeah. Yep. I got locked up listening to Future. Um, name my mixtape in jail. Came home. Some years later, wrote down that I was gonna collab with the top producer, and, and it happened. And it happened. And it happened. That's and it happened. was like, and the future shows so much love. Like, that nigga future is different. Home oh, different. That's a different nigga there. What type of love he showed you? Like, it was just like, he was humble. Like, it was it, like, you just wasn't really like, I ain't gonna count when I walked in. I didn't even really realize I was standing next to future. Like, it was like, we standing next to each other on by the mixing board, listen to the song. And it wasn't until like, he looked at me and said, damn, nigga, this shit hard as fuck. Like, you got a hit, nigga. This shit hit. And I was like, appreciate it. And I looked, I said, God damn, the fuck? <laughs> oh, that nigga feel. I'm like, damn, this shit done came. He was like, why you came crazy on this motherfucker too? Like, you fucked that motherfucker up. So it's like, it's, he came in eight, eight. Yeah. Eight, man. Like, yeah, right now it's a, it's a, it's a good moment right now. Like, you know sure. what I'm saying? I fuck with it. Fuck with right. it. Any last words and shout outs? Uh, definitely. Um, shout out everybody put this together. Shout out all my dogs. Shout out, shout out the city. Shout out, um, shit, everybody who woke up this morning. Really, everybody who really like striving to get it, make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody helping to make, make Euro go big. Shout out AE. Shout out, um, yeah, that's it. I dropped a pill in my drink. I took a meal out the bank. Then I jumped in the race. I'm everything that you ain't. My boss, I'm ever